New recruits to Planet Side 2 are often tempted by the vast array of weaponry that's available to their respective faction, and well, for the Vanu Sovereignty, the Carbine Arsenal is of no exception to this. But does that mean you should throw away the default Solstice VE3 Carbine at the first available opportunity? G'day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today guys, we're going to be reviewing the Solstice VE3 Carbine available to the VS. So, for those of you who are new to the channel here, weapon reviews for us look a little something like this. We're going to start off with a quick and fast TLDR of the review for those of you who are a little bit more pressed for time, which, let's be honest, is fair considering how long these reviews can actually go. I like to ramble about weapons, sue me. But for those more stats hungry viewers out there, we will follow up with an in depth look at the weapon's stats to see how it operates, and then go over some tips and tricks for managing these stats in a way that lets you, you know, use the weapon effectively. To to wrap things up here, we'll get into a quick discussion about the weapon's attachments and what works in your favour here in the grand scheme of things. But without further ado, let's quickly get our teeth sunk into the TLDR of the Solstice. So the Solstice VE3. I still remember my reaction when I picked up the weapon for the first time when I created my Vanu alt all those years ago. I remember saying out loud, well shit, this is what I've been missing out on, and I fell in love with the weapon instantly. And out of the gate as a starting weapon, it's more than capable of being a strong companion as you get yourself acquainted with the game and its mechanics. The recoil is solid, the reload is about as short as people's patience in the line at the DMV, and it's just a nice, solid all-rounder. However, whenever I return to the weapon over my other options now, I feel like my nostalgia goggles must have been on full tilt, because it just doesn't perform as good as I remember it doing so, and working on this review has given me the opportunity to try and work out why. And, well, it's quite simple, really. This weapon has one of the lowest skill ceilings in the game. If the weapon could aim for you, it would. The Solstice is 100% built around guiding new players with a caring grip, even if they've never played an FPS game in their entire life. They still have the easiest possible experience in the game, no matter their experience level with this weapon, which is all well and good, but that also means that as far as its maximum potential is concerned, the weapon maxes out very quickly. Even if you take advantage of the laser accurate recoil to chain headshots and really time your reloads well, your overall DPS is still going to fall short against the weapons that feature the more aggressive recoil patterns and damage models in the game. And that's not necessarily a con against the Solstice as a weapon itself. It just means that as you grow as a player, the weapon is going to stop growing with you in turn. It's just something to think about as you continue to grow as a player and maybe as your skills grow beyond what the Solstice is capable of keeping up with. But let's just take a deeper look at why this is the case with the weapon and go from there. Let's start off here with the damage model. We have a very humble run-of-the-mill maximum damage of 143 at 10 meters, dropping off to minimum damage of 112 at the 60 meter mark, which means that yes, we do drop a total of two damage tiers as we start to lessen the amount of pixels our enemies actually take up on our screens. This in effect means that it will take you 7 shots to kill a target within the 10 meter range, 8 shots to kill a target between 11 and 39 meters before tapering off to a 9 shot kill beyond that 39 meter distance out to the minimum damage range of 60 meters. So it's not what you would call a particularly potent long range weapon, but it still holds some merit in the medium ranges from a raw damage perspective. Take this with the rate of fire of 698 rounds per minute or 11.63 rounds per second and we arrive at a theoretical time to kill of, ooh, ouch, a pretty sizable 0.52 seconds at 10 meters, 0.61 seconds at 39 meters, and 0.69 seconds at the 60 meter mark. Keeping in mind that these stats assume that all rounds are hitting the chest area with no damage modifiers coming into play and no muzzle velocity being accounted for. Now moving on, we have ourselves our recoil pattern here and this is where things start to become a little bit more agreeable when compared against the damage. We have here a weapon that sports an incredibly light sustained vertical kick with some pretty light and horizontal jiggle per shot, with the two main drawbacks here being a quite frankly pain in the ass first shot multiplier and a small right hand side angle. Getting more into the stats, we have ourselves a 0.25 degree vertical recoil kick per shot which is incredibly easy to control especially when compared to the 0.3 degree vertical kick per shot that operated on a 750 rounds per minute fire rate from the track 5 that we recently reviewed. The downside here though is a whopping 
2.8 times first shot multiplier, which makes the first shot of the recoil of the solstice 0.7 degrees. Tapping the trigger repeatedly will generate a lot more recoil than it's worth here, so keep that in mind. Horizontally, we have a horizontal kick per shot of only 0.2 degree per shot, either left or right, and is governed by a horizontal tolerance of 0.5, which means that the weapon can only kick two shots in the same direction, which keeps things relatively centered, which is a good thing. The real challenge here, though, is the right-hand side recoil angle that kicks the weapon anywhere between 14 and 17 degrees to the right every shot, which is going to require some extra effort from you by compensating to the left on your mouse when firing. It's not impossible to get around, in fact it's quite easy to deal with overall and learn, just an inconvenience if anything as a starting point. As far as the cone of fire is concerned, there's nothing really too out of the ordinary here to report apart Apart from a pretty serviceable hip fire, but all things considered, it's not really worth spending too much time on. Ammo wise, we have our standard 30 round magazine, which is complemented by a 210 round ammo pool, but just because these here Vanu are all about efficiency, we have ourselves a cool calm, collected, some may even say crisp short reload of 1.65 seconds and a long reload of 2.28 seconds, which is really on the shorter end of things. It is a snappy reload. Wrapping things up here with the weapon is a 0.5 times aiming down sights movement multiplier and a 515 meters per second muzzle velocity. Alright, so that right there is the package that builds up the Varnu Sovereignty's entry-level carbine for new players, and overall we have ourselves an admittingly snappy package here. There's no denying here that the standout performer of the weapon is the oh-so-amazing reload. And hey, I might just be being spoiled after coming across from the likes of the Gossor, where you could read a novel before having a reload completed, but for me it is a true selling point of this weapon. The amount of times I've found myself with a tailing enemy after I've run out of ammo, only to have the reload done and ready for a countering engage where other weapons would still be fumbling around with that bulky magazine is insane. The reload alone gives you a lot of room for flexibility, which is incredibly important for newer players as they learn the ropes of the battle flow. So feel free to play a bit more aggressively here. You have a reload speed that can get you out of tough situations in a pinch if required. And the snappy and forgiving reload also paints the rest of the picture for the weapon as a whole, I feel. The recoil pattern is easily controllable and can be learned, and overall is accurate out to mid-range under long bursts. And the hip fire is without a doubt something you can depend on on, especially with a laser sight for some good old light assault shenanigans. So as a starter weapon, I rate it about as highly as it gets, and it serves the purpose of being a smooth start in the game for a newer player. But its strength on that front is also its weakness. Allow me to explain. Everything that builds up this weapon is all about making it easy to pick up and use without hassle. And the one element of the weapon that cops a bit of a hit to make this happen is the damage profile and the corresponding rate of fire. Now, I'm not saying that a 143 damage, 698 rounds per minute fire rate weapon is horrible. It's better than the 143, 652 rounds per minute model that is found on weapons that are built entirely on choke point holding and accuracy alone. And when paired with some headshots, the Solstice can still knock out targets without much hassle at all. However, no matter how accurate you are here, the theoretical time to kill is still at its best if you land all chest shots, only just going to sit at around 0.5 of a second, which when compared against some of the more popular weapons you'll face in CQC, does fall short. Which means that yes, you can aim like a god with this weapon and start chaining headshots like no tomorrow, but at some point, you as a player are going to grow beyond what this weapon can offer you. The emphasis on accuracy over damage model is at some point going to stop providing you a net gain as a player. The Solstice is the quote-unquote proud father of a weapon. It guides you through your early days as an Araxian, but it eventually sends you off roaring and ready to go with the skills you need to find greener pastures. It walks you down the aisle, teary-eyed to the likes of the Pulsar C, the VX6-7, or even the Serpent, proud as can be, waiting to see you do great things with your new companion. It's a weapon that I will always have fond memories of, but it is something that I struggle to pick up nowadays because I find myself performing better with weapons that have more extreme intricacies and therefore more extreme potentials. And I'm not saying that to try and steer new players away from this weapon, no 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 no, this is certainly a weapon that I would recommend to any new player to stick with for a very long time. It's what I would call the most adaptable of the starter carbines in the game, but once you start feeling as though you've peaked, it might be the weapon, not you, so feel free to experiment a little bit at that point. But beyond that little spiel, there are a couple of more things you can do to make the most of the weapon here, and the first one is quite obvious. It's one word, headshots. 
Headshots, headshots, headshots. Did someone say headshots? Yes, headshots. The less than perfect damage model here is quite frankly going to leave you on the shorter end of the stick in straight 1v1 firefights. So taking advantage of the accuracy is just going to let you make up for that shortcoming and still dominate. In saying that, don't overestimate the accuracy of the weapon either. Yes, the recoil here is good and is capable of unleashing accurate bursts at medium distances with no hassle at all. But that sustained accuracy quickly tapers off beyond the 35-ish meter distance, which is where, you know, the recoil angle starts to become a bit more of a problem child. And sure, you could just start bursting to compensate as such, but at ranges where you're going to start employing two to three shot bursts, the first shot multiply just sort of comes screaming into the room, belligerent, drunk as a skunk, and starts ruining the vibe altogether. You combine with the aggressive damage drop off over range, and well, at that point you might as well just start trying to kill enemies with hateful words. And look, that doesn't really work on the likes of the NC in particular when they have to deal with friendly fire more than enemy fire. They're a special kind of breed over there, they have some thick skin, hurtful words ain't gonna do nothing. All I'm saying here guys is don't overestimate the effective range of the solstice, keep it within medium distance and it will serve you well. Anyway, that's a good chunk of info regarding the solstice, but let's quickly wrap up with some attachment option conversation for improving how this weapon performs. It has access to a 1x to 4x optic including a 1x RNV, a flash suppressor, standard suppressor, laser sight, forward grip, and dark light flashlight. We're not exactly spoiled for choice here at all, admittingly, but there are some builds that we can adopt here. Personally, I find myself running a 1x to 2x optic. Do not go beyond 2x. A 3.4x on this weapon is just not going to be worth it at all. And the 2x does give you a bit more medium distance clarity if you wanted to, you know, sort of sit up in the gantries as a light assault and start hitting people from above. The next attachment I would recommend would be a laser sight. Now, yes, the forward grip is great for taming that horizontal recoil angle, and if you are having problems with it, it's definitely a solid choice to go with. I just find myself having a bit more success with that laser sight on board for that better hipfire accuracy, considering my play style as a bit more of an aggressive light assault player. Now, yes, you could also go about mounting a suppressor on here as well for some more stealthy engagements, and in close quarters scenarios, that can go a long way, but I find it hurting the muzzle velocity just a bit too much for my liking and hurting the overall adaptability of the weapon so as a result I decided to go with a flash suppressor instead and just you know hide off that muzzle flash in the grand scheme of things. And guys with all that said that's going to conclude today's weapon review of the Solstice VE3. I know you guys have been waiting for some Varnu Sovereignty love on here and yes there's been a lot of requests for Varnu Sovereignty Quartermasters overview episodes and I promise you guys they are coming shortly. Stay tuned and we will get to them as soon as I can. As always guys if you enjoyed today's video be sure to backhand the like button if i missed out any tips and tricks for using the solstice also let me know in the comment section down below i'd love to hear what everyone has to say about this weapon and as always guys if you're new to the channel consider subscribing as well to keep up to date with all content that we release here all social media links including a link to join my youtube memberships are linked in the description down below as well guys once again hope you guys enjoyed today's video peace out and i'll see you guys all in the next one take care guys have a good one